Okay, welcome in. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, birth death processes, which are a specific type of Markov chain. Um, we discussed Markov chain simulations in a recent video. Um, essentially, a birth death process is a process where uh, you can only kind of add one, so a birth, or decrease one, a death, um, to sort of the population or whatever variable you're measuring at each time step. You could also, you know, different birth death processes do this differently, but you could also stay at the same. So, you know, if the population is size five, you can either have a birth and go to six, have a death and go to four, or you could stay at five for another round. Some, you know, processes don't include that, but, but we will here. Um, so we want to simulate that. And, you know, again, simulation is really useful because we can explore and kind of get our hands around these processes and see what their behaviors like, play with the parameters and see how that changes things. As always, we're going to set the seeds so that our random um, results can be replicated. And we're going to define the probability of a birth and the probability of a death in each uh, on each step. So we're going to say for now, 20% probability for each one. We're also going to define the probability of no event. So again, if we're at seven children, you know, probability that we stay at seven children, there's no death, no birth in, in the next period. We're just going to say that's one minus um, so everything kind of left over. Um, in in this case, that will be uh, sixty percent. And again, you know, you can take this out. You know, if if you don't want, to, you can have zero probability of of no event. Um, we're going to be varying these later and kind of playing with them and seeing seeing what happens. Uh, let's do a hundred steps or a hundred generations of uh, the population, and we're going to initialize the population um, at one individual, one cell, one amoeba, whatever. You know, you can again start from from anywhere you want. Um, and then the process, uh, like many simulations, we're going to be using a loop where we kind of loop through the different generations. So from uh, uh, one generation all the way to, you know, the hundredth. Um, and then inside the loop, we're actually going to get into uh, the, the generating process. So you'll notice I have two if statements here. Um, I like I'm going to minimize them here. I have uh, an if statement if the tail of the population, the the last value in the population is greater than zero. Um, and then I have an if statement if the tail of the population is equal to zero. The idea here, which which you may kind of kind of sense is that if we are in a generation where we have zero individuals in the population, we don't want to go to negative one, um, right? Because then we kind of just have like a random walk, right? Which is a little bit different. Um, we want to either stay at zero or kind of go back up to one. And you can also define your chain to, you know, end at zero. Like if we reach zero, it's done. That state recurs forever. In this case, we're going to have it kind of bounce back. Um, but that that that's an option for you as well. Um, and again, this is kind of what it keeps this distinct from a random walk. And if you wanted a really pure birth or death process, then maybe this this state, you know, you just you just end once you hit the state. But anyways, um, this is our first case where we're not quite at zero. The last value in population um, is greater than zero. And each time through the loop, we're going to kind of increment by selecting um, either a birth, a death, or a, a no event. So we're going to use the sample function, which is a function I really like. Um, we're going to sample from our vector x, which is just negative 1, 0, and 1. This represents a death, um, no event, 0, or 1, a birth. We just want to pick 1. Size equals 1. We want to pick 1 element from this vector. And we're going to sample according to these probabilities, which we defined above. The probability of death, which maps to negative 1. The probability of no event, which maps to 0. And the probability of a birth, <clears throat> which maps to 1. So let's just you know sample that for now. And we can see we got a death. We got negative 1. Um, and if we did it again, um, yeah, you know, we're going to see zero the most often because there's, you know, 60% chance of a, of a no event. Um, so then we just kind of tack it on to our population. Um, so we, uh, concatenate with the C, the population and, uh, the last value of our population. So in this case, our population is just of length one and we just grab the kind of last value in population and we add on, um, the, uh, birth, death or no event. So in this case, we're concatenating the population with the last value of the population plus the no event, which is going to be one. I'm going to run this whole code, and you're going to see that population is now a vector of length two, um, one in the first state, and then you know no event, so, so uh, one in the next state as well. Um, that's the first uh, if condition. I put this next here because once we've done that, we want to move to the next generation. We've had our you know randomness, so we're done. We want to go to the next <clears throat> loop. Um, if uh, you know, if the last value in population is not greater than zero, so we kind of enter this condition where, you know, we're already at zero, we're going to have a very similar sample, except in this case, we're only going to sample a no event, a zero, and a birth, a one. 
Um, and we just define the probability. Again, you can do this how you want. We just define the probabilities where we renormalize. So we take the probability of no event and divide by the only two possible things, which is no event and a birth. We take out the death. So, you know, marginally, no event has 6% probability. When we renormalize, it goes up to 75%. And marginally, the birth has 20% 20 probability and, and it goes to 25% when we, when we renormalize. Again, you know, you can change that if you want. You can even like have these vary over time, add that. But in this case, we're kind of doing a simple example. So you can kind of build um, from there. So that's the code and I can run it and I run it all good, got, got no errors, and I can just inspect the population vector. Um, and you can see, you know, this is what we expect. It kind of bounces around, it goes up by one. Here, it was at one, and then there was death, and it stayed at zero for a while, then back to one, back to zero, and then it kind of started to grow. Um, and we can very easily plot this with the uh, plot function in R. I specified type line, and we can just see this nice little population uh, growing over time. Um, and now we can play with different values if we want. So, you know, I can um, really increase uh, the probability of a birth. So now I have 60% birth, 20% death, and then the remaining 20% is no event. And we're going to see, you know, the population grows most. It doesn't go down that much. It's not flat that much. It's usually growing. Um, if I did the reverse and, you know, increase the, the probability of the probability of death, um, then here, this looks a lot, you know, different. I start at one. Once in a while, you know, I go up but usually it just goes straight back down to zero. And when we're at zero, remember, there can be no death. So it's either, you know, in this case, it's a 50-50 shot because it's 20% each, you know, marginally. Um, it's a 50-50 shot between having a birth and, and kind of staying. So you see a couple of times where we stay at zero, have a birth, come back, stay at zero, have birth, come back. Um, but we we rarely have births above, you know, one. So this this population only hits size three one time. It only, it hits size two a couple of times because the probability of a death is so... Um, high. Uh, we can even like totally like make the probability of no event zero. There's other ways to do this, but we could make it so probability of birth and probability of death add up to one. My apologies. Oh, sorry, my watch that I said something to Siri. Um, and here, this is a, an interesting chart because there's no flat regions, right? There's because we either have a death or a birth guaranteed, um, we never stay stagnant. Once we hit zero, we bounce right back up to one with 100% probability. And otherwise, we're kind of just um, going up and down. Um, and if you know, if you want to, it's always good to test like the edge cases. So if you just set probability of birth equal to one, we should just get a line that goes up straight and we do and ends at 100. Um, so hopefully this made sense. Uh, again, kind of a cool subset of Markov chains and nice to be able to run simulations to understand them better. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.